Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's all about racing. In this episode, we're going to do another NASCAR throwback. This, the number 29 car of Kevin Harvick from his 2003 NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Now guys, this is a 124 scale Chevrolet Monte Carlo done by Action Elite, considered one of the best die cast makers, you know, quite frankly, in the world at that time, particularly in the... Uh, in the NASCAR series. Now, to kind of start his career off in the upper level series, he I'm going to forgo his truck series uh, uh, history because there's just too much to cover. But he was the 2000 NASCAR Bush Series Rookie of the Year and the series' most popular driver. Uh, in that series, or what they call the Xfinity Series, he won 341 races over 21 years. He had 47 wins, 261 top 10s, 25 poles, and he was a series champion in 2001 and 2006. Now, in 2001, he became the NASCAR Cup Series Rookie of the Year and competed to date, and I believe he may have retired this year in 2023. I'm not sure because I don't follow NASCAR anymore, but I think he might have. Guys, if I'm right, uh, correct me. If I'm wrong, correct me, whatever, but... He ran 803 races over 23 years. He had 60 wins, 442 top 10s, 31 poles, and he was a series champion in 2014. This year, in 2023, he was named one of NASCAR's greatest 75 drivers. Congratulations, Kevin. He's not even retired yet, or he may be. In 2007, he won the Daytona 500, and he holds the record for the most wins at Phoenix Raceway with nine wins. And his 121 combined National Series wins rank him number three all time behind Richard Petty and Kyle Busch. And his 60 Cup wins rank him 10th in the series history. And he is currently the longest tenured active driver in the Winston Cup series. And to preface that, I remember him in 2001 because he replaced Dale Earnhardt Sr. following his, de last, his death in the last lap of the series opening Daytona 500. And Kevin and his wife are the former owner of Kevin Harvick, Inc., of which fielded teams in the Xfinity series and the truck series. Guys, this is really a nice uh, model here by Action. Um, of note, I particularly like the way the front end is beveled. I consider, you know, quite frankly, almost all the NASCAR cars to be pretty ugly because they're they're based on sedans. Let's face it, they're not thoroughbred race cars, and they're all cookie cutter. They're all frames with a shell that looks like it's a race car, but that's about it. But this one is done very, very nicely. The details on it, as usual, are exceptional. And this car comes with a box, which you can also use as a storage or display case for the car. And folks, like all cars of this era and of this grade, the hood and the trunk open. The hood you can see there. And here's a look at the trunk and the fuel cell. These cars also featured full cabin details. I mean, they're quite phenomenal. It's a shame the doors don't open. Oh, that's right. These are NASCAR cars. The doors don't open. Duh. And the bottom of the cars are absolutely amazing. I mean, look at all this phenomenal detail. You have suspension that works on it. You have a drive shaft that does actually turn. And the wheels do steer. All the details you can see from the transmission hub, from the engine, are, are just phenomenal. Made in China by hand, I'm sure. There's no way in hell... They could have done this uh, any other way. And this is also a limited series car. This is actually number 10. That is a really low number of 2,500 of these cars. In fact, that might be the lowest numbered car that I have of any of the three or 400 cars I have collectively in all of my limited car series. And folks, here's a good look at what the car looks like from the passenger side. And we'll scroll up front and you see the number 29, you know, visible for the spotters, you know, at a distance, as is typical of these cars. And folks, that will conclude this particular episode of It's All About Racing. Thanks for joining. See you next time.